Hi, I'm Dewey Hollister, the Executive Director of the St. George Village Botanical Garden, the Botanical Garden of the Virgin Islands. And today we're not actually in the garden, we're actually out and about on the island, and it looks like we're standing in a forest, which we are to some extent. But today I want to talk to you about invasive species. No matter where we are on the planet, there are plants that have been introduced and they are causing problems or they're taking over spaces from native plants. So right now, the invasive species that I want to talk to you about are actually all around me. The plants you see behind me are invasive to this island, even though they look like they're a natural little forest. The plant behind me is Tantan. Tantan is an invasive tree uh, and it covers large areas of the Virgin Islands. It's not a terrible invasive in the sense that native plants can grow up underneath it. It does stabilize soil. It adds to the soil's fertility because it pr produces fertilizer from the nitrogen in the air and puts that into the ground for other plants to use. So it, it can be a good nurse tree, but because it is so ubiquitous everywhere on the island, it has really caused a lot of plants to have difficulty uh, coming back because of the thickness of these things. So I, unfortunately, I'm just surrounded with all sorts of invasive things. Let me tell you another one that we're going to look at right now. If you look off to my right, your left, you're going to see way down there something that looks like a cactus. And that is actually not a cactus. It is actually euphorbia. That's euphorbia lactea, the dragon bones plant. It is from India. And the slightest little piece breaking off of that will root into another plant. So usually where you see this, somebody's tossed away some pieces of the plant or some yard debris, and in the end, it's taken root like these have and are growing up in here. Uh, because it's not native, nothing feeds on it. It doesn't produce any habitat for native animals. So it just takes up space. And because of its obnoxious sap and thorns, it causes problems with other wildlife and birds moving along. Some birds do nest in it because it's an unfriendly plant. But on balance, it's not a great thing. In front of it, and all the way up to me, you can see mother-in-law's tongue. This is the common house plant that you're probably familiar with. Uh, it's grown throughout the world as an ornamental, but it was not introduced to this island as an ornamental. Believe it or not, this is African, and this was introduced from Africa for fiber. One of the names for mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant that you may not have heard is bowstring hemp. And indeed, it can be made into rather coarse cordage. Uh, rope materials and other things can be made from it. It's extremely drought tolerant. You can see it can take shade. It can also take full sun. Very difficult to eradicate. And one of the big problems is you can see down in here how dense this is. It's very difficult for anything to get started as a seedling and make it up high enough to start getting light out of these plants. And they are down there pulling up every last little bit of moisture that's on the surface so it's very much an inhibitor of new things getting going another species that is i'm going to call questionable is the one that's behind me you can see it has a little bit bigger broader foliage there that is white man jack white man jack is listed in some publications and some sources as a native plant to the virgin islands but suspiciously it only occurs uh, in big numbers on the island of St. Croix. The other Virgin Islands don't have this plant very often, and it has all the growth characteristics of an invasive species. It comes up in huge numbers, it crowds out other plants, and it's very likely this plant was introduced in the earlier colonial days from South America, where we know Northern South America is, is a native home for it. So it's probably an invasive, depends on your source, and a little confusion there. Uh, but there are a few natives amongst us. This vine that's going up the tan tan that you can see right now that my hand is on, this is Caribbean gold vine. It's a beautiful native, has big yellow flowers in massive profusions, uh, usually in the early springtime. Uh, so it's just finished its bloom time now. So it is surviving here in this tan tan woodland such that it is. Now, another native vine that, uh, frankly, I don't want to touch is this little guy right here. This is stinging nettle vine, and it's called stinging nettle for a reason. 
if you touch the little hairs that are on this, it's gonna burn for about 15 minutes. And you can almost see these tiny little hairs on the surface of these leaves, both sides actually, and even up and down the stems. And it is very common in these tan tan areas. So you have non-native plants as a whole community of invasives. And one of the natives that manages to live here is a not very friendly one on top of that. And oddly enough, speaking of non-native things, I'm just gonna walk over here and pull down this plant. This is Ginger Thomas. Ginger Thomas is known for its clusters of beautiful yellow tube flowers. And it is in fact, our floral emblem for the U.S. Virgin Islands. But most biologists believe today that this is not a native of the Virgin Islands. In fact, it may not even be native anywhere in the Caribbean. It could be a very, very early colonial introduction, again, without records, from Central America where we know it's native. So it could be that it's native to the Greater Antilles. Not sure. Pretty much sure that it is not native here. So you've taken a rogues gallery tour of some of our most invasive species. And while it looks like a lovely woodland around me, this is definitely a disturbed and problematic habitat. So one of the great things we do at, at the Botanical Garden is we grow natives in our Virgin Islands Rare Plant Initiative, and we try to introduce them all around the island so that the seedlings can get going in places like this and eventually replace these non-native woodlands with our very rich native woodlands. Well, I really appreciate you coming on this, uh, this little expedition with me into the land of the invasives, and I look forward to being with you next time.